All right, so um, we're going to be learning how to splint a uh, wrist injury. So we'll pretend like they have some type of wrist fracture, um, and we're going to learn today how to splint it and support it so we can get them to the hospital safely and that that bone can start healing as soon as possible. The supplies you'll need, you'll need your two stretch gauzes. So you should have got two of these in your kit. And you'll need your triangle bandage. If you don't have these things, you might have to improvise a bit, uh, which is fine because that's what happens in the real world. Um, for the actual splint, this is a piece of cardboard. So you can use cardboard, you can use a piece of wood, uh, whatever works to support the wrist and arm uh, is fine. So this is cardboard. It's used a lot of times with uh, first responders, so firefighters, paramedics. Um, and also there are sand splints. So first for the uh, cardboard, these sides flip up and then they support that wrist above and below the wrist. So we want something that's going to cover above and below and support that whole radius and ulna here up to the elbow. Another thing that's often used by first responders are these SAM splints. So they come rolled up in a package and both of these items are pretty cheap. Um, and what's good about these is there's longer ones, so this could be for an ankle. Uh, it can also be used as a special splint technique called a sugar tong, where we can go above and below. Uh, but for this, I usually would just do it folded over so it's extra strong. Uh, you can roll these up, which makes them super awesome. And we can make a little wrist grip here. And now I have support above and below the wrist. So I want to support the hand and I want to support the radius and ulna so there's less movement here where that injury is because we want that uh, blood clot to form and those osteocells to get to work cleaning up this injury and start the healing process faster. So I want to support it. And what's great about SAM splints is they are moldable. So you can custom fit it to their arm so that you're really going to hold that wrist in place. So once you find your splint, uh, could be anything. For example, I broke my arm as a kid. My dad got a two by four and we duct taped my arm to it. And that worked fine. Um, so you have to be a little creative sometimes and that's fine. Uh, so once you have it supported, we'll go over how to wrap it up and tie it off so that it's secure and we'll end with the triangle bandage showing you how to uh, make a sling so that you have all the pieces of the puzzle together to get the patient to the hospital so they can get an x-ray possibly surgery and then get that hard cast later on okay so alex here broke her arm and uh, can you wiggle your fingers for me Okay, and I'm just gonna check a pulse. Sorry if it hurts. Okay, and then just keep holding it like you're doing. So you wanna check for a pulse because if there's not blood flow to the hand, then that's gonna be a serious issue. What we would do if you were trained to do so is you could gently pull to try to get the circulation back in the hand, but we're not gonna do that because there is a pulse. The next step, is we want to get something to splint. So just like you're all gonna do this at home, I grabbed a cardboard box that I folded. So it's pretty secure and they use cardboard in uh, the medical profession as well. Firefighters and first responders use them. So it's not super sketchy. So I'm gonna try to slide it under and I wanna support above and below the joint. So if right here in the carpals is what's fractured, I want to support above and below. So I'm the whole putting the whole arm right here supporting it so that blood clot, the soft callus can start to form right away. 
So I'm going to have you just hold it, the cardboard there. Then you're going to get your stretch gauze and you're gently going to wrap above and below. And you should have two of these so you can double up. So I'm going to pause it so I have more time. So when you get to the end of one roll, you can just keep going over it and restarting a new roll. That's totally fine to do. Okay, so when you get to the end, you're gonna leave a tail. And can you move it in a little bit? What you'll do is over the top, so you're gonna end with it over the top, you karate chop, bring the loop under, and then you can make a knot. Just like you knot your shoe, you're gonna knot it on top. Preferably not over the broken uh, <laughs> bone like I did, but you get the idea. So you tie a knot and that secures it. Now the last thing that's most important is you're gonna check for a pulse again. Make sure you're not cutting off circulation or the bones didn't move to block circulation to below the broken area. So can you wiggle your fingers for me again? And I'm just gonna reach in and check a pulse. Okay, and there's still a pulse. So the last thing we're gonna do is create a sling so that Alex here is ready to transport to the hospital. Okay, so the next thing you'll do is get your triangle bandage. And it's called that because it's a big triangle. And at the top of your triangle, you're gonna make just a knot. Because this is where the elbow is gonna fit in. So it makes a little pocket for it. So that's step one. So we know that this is where the elbow goes. So I'm gonna reach around Alex here. So I'm putting her elbow in that pocket and then taking my two ends here over her shoulder and I want to secure it up at a level that's good. And then tie a knot. You're